Welcome to Power Factory 2021 What's New. Despite the difficulties of this year, we at Dix Island have been able to continue our software development and would like to present some of the major new features in Power Factory 2021. In this version, we have further enhanced the user interface. Now diagrams and other tabs can be undocked completely, allowing users to make use of multiple monitors. Tabular reports can also now be docked into tab groups. In the Data Manager, an address bar has been introduced in order to allow browser-like navigation. Autocomplete helps the user to navigate the project structure whilst a history, favorites and most commonly used folders make for easy access. Multidimensional attributes such as short-term thermal ratings, can now be displayed directly from the tabular view via a double-click. And the tabs for the flexible data, scenarios, characteristics and distributions are now colored according to the user settings. The Scenarios tab gives access to our new Operation Scenario Manager. This page can be used to look at selected scenario data for several scenarios at once. The configuration of attributes to be viewed for each element class can be saved and these configurations can then be selected from this drop-down menu. Within the Operation Scenario Manager, values can be copied from one scenario to another, allowing the user to easily adjust data over multiple operation scenarios. As well as the Operation Scenario Manager, a Variation Manager has been introduced which allows an overview of variations and expansion stages in a Gantt chart format with user-definable time ranges and scales. Using DoubleClick, the user can directly access individual expansion stages to see more details. The recording stage is highlighted in red, and the red bar indicates the current study time, which can be changed by double-clicking on the line. The functionality of many of our standard plots, namely X, Y, bar, scatter and energy plots, has been completely updated. In addition to the existing features, a simple click gives access to the underlying data for a single data point. And here you can see that when the mouse is hovered, a summary of values for that point in time is shown. Another feature has been introduced to help see individual curves more clearly when many values have been plotted. As with diagram layers, curves can be moved to the front or back via the context menu. In the new plots, it is also easier to edit diagram elements such as the title and legend just by double-clicking on them. Similarly, the axes are easily configured, for example, to change the format or adjust the scale. In addition to extensions and updates to many of our analysis tools, we have introduced two new functions, one for the analysis of power parks and the other for further optimizing distribution networks. The new power park energy analysis function provides an evaluation of profitability of power parks based on load flow calculations. The function can be found in the Economic Analysis Tools toolbox. Three calculation methods are available the basic analysis, the time series analysis based on the quasi-dynamic simulation and the probabilistic analysis. The Power Park Energy Analysis Report command with its predefined report sections offers the possibility for displaying the results easily in the output window. Predefined plots are available such as this annual duration curve for probabilistic analysis or these wind speed plots for the basic analysis. The new function Optimal Equipment Placement is part of the Distribution Network Tools module and allows the user to optimize the use of voltage regulators and storage models within their distribution feeder. Both the optimal position and optimal sizing can be identified, taking thermal and voltage constraints into account. The optimal solution can automatically be applied within a network variation and is therefore directly available for the user. Once the optimized results are calculated, they can be visualized in a plot, as shown here. As in every new Power Factory release, the network models are improved and extended. Let us have a look at some of these, starting with developments relating to power electronics.
The capability for modeling modular multilevel converters is extended with the introduction of the new MMC valve object. This allows users to model the individual submodules of MMC converters, including submodule capacitors, IGBTs, and anti parallel diodes. An anti parallel diode option is now offered as an enhancement to the DC valve element for the turn on or turn on off valve types for representing typical configurations used in power electronics. The concept of a submodel element has been introduced. With this, users are able to completely redefine the internal representation of the EMT model of a built-in element, such as a PWM converter or static VAR compensator. Another new model is the pulse generator, developed for simplifying the effort of implementing various power electronics modulation strategies in EMT simulations. An AC-DC connection element has been introduced so that AC and DC network parts can be connected in EMT simulations. For studying network faults, the inter-circuit fault event has been enhanced in order to model DC-DC faults. And a new event has been introduced for studying overhead line faults where the outcome can be different on either side of the fault point. For dynamic modeling using DSL, the built-in dynamic models now support array signals or vectors useful when a large number of similar objects are to be linked. In block diagrams, it is now possible to route signals of a composite frame using labels. These simplify the diagram when many signals need to be routed. These are just the highlights of course. We hope that you will have a look at the What's New document which gives much more information about new features in PowerFactory 2021.